Dr. Weich Coleman here. This is video five of six in the basic cataract series. And this is cortex removal. So if you haven't seen the other videos, it's basically 10 random cases from a given day, straightforward, non-laser, all from the same surgery day and individual steps broken down. So if you want to know how long each step takes, divide the total time by 10. That's my average time over a 10K series. So starting out with cortex removal, the first thing I'm going to do is take the time to make sure my sleeve is in a good position if the tech hasn't gotten in a good position where there's a small amount of overlap of the pink sleeve on the uh, polymer tip. Um, I'm going to stop and do that. It should go a, maybe not right up to that collar, but a little bit of overlap is good. That's going to get the fluid flowing the way you want to and get you a nice stable chamber. I think it's worth the time. Now, in the nucleus video, I talked a lot about taking the nucleus in quarters, and I'm a big proponent of taking it in quarters, and, and also a big proponent of going fast when you're in a safe position and slowing down when things are more risky. So cortex is exactly the same. And when I think about going in to start the cortex, my plan is basically to take it in quarters. And I want to move in an arc and engage a big swath of cortex, not take it in little pizza pie slices one at a time. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, it's faster. Number two, it's safer. Number three, it, it gives you less tension on the zonules because when you're engaging the cortex and you're initially pulling it away at the equator, you want to be pulling tangential to the direction of the zonules, so not radial, not towards the center. You want to be pulling tangential to them. So moving in an arc allows you to do that. Now, you'll watch these cases and, and notice that I don't always get it in quarters, but that's my general idea. And my other general idea is that once I go in and take a chunk of cortex, and I'm ten, I tend to start on the left side. Some people like to get the suppositional first. I'm not that worried about it. Um, and sometimes like this, it just all comes out at once, and that's great. But I want to go and, uh, and engage a portion of it and remove it. And then I don't want to go back and start the next portion right next to where I just left off because what's behind that clear, open, posterior capsule? I want to go back to a spot. Um, let's imagine that I take the right superior right or right inferior quadrant first I, I then want to go and start directly superiorly where I've got cortex between me and and posterior capsule so that means I've got to engage some cortex before I engage the capsule as long as I'm in a position where I've got to engage cortex for engage fat capsule we can move pretty fast and be pretty heavy on the foot and then when you get nothing but clear capsule, when you have the last quarter remaining and you're starting it with clear capsule behind you on either side, no matter where you start, that's when you slow down and move a little bit slower. It should also be noted that, that my initial movement, once I engage moving in an arc and get a piece that I want, I'm then going to push down. I'm going to push posterior. It's a U-shaped movement. And there's a method behind the madness there in that the, the cortex where it's attached to the anterior capsule, if you pull it centrally, then you're pulling in the wrong axis to be peeling it away the way it's stuck down. At the equator, you want to be pulling it centrally, but initially when it's connected on the anterior portion of the capsule, at the anterior capsule leaflet, you want to be pushing down. Once you've removed it and separated it all the way out to the equator, then you want to be pulling central and then once you're pulling it up off the posterior portion of the capsule, you want to be pulling up. So after you engage, moving in an arc, and once a, once a sufficient amount's engaged, as much as you think you can engage at one time, however much that is, probably a few clock hours. We'd like to, for it to be quarters, but something like that is good. You know, close, the, the closer the better. Then we're going to push down. Then we're going to pull central, and then we're going to pull up as we're adding vac the whole time, as we're adding foot uh, to keep it from disengaging from your port. You know, subincisional cortex, they can be removed after the lens is in too, so don't get too hung up on it. But I'm going to talk through these next few cases as they're occurring on the screen. We got a big portion there. I'm always ready. I can get a second instrument anytime I want if I get a little piece of nucleus that's stopping up the tip. So I'm moving in an arc. 
and I'm trying to push it down. Now, there's only one quarter left, so I'm going to be pretty careful on that last little segment. And we can polish if we want to. I do go to a polish setting. Um, I'm, I'm changing settings with the foot myself. I don't have a tech changing settings. That way I don't have to wait for them if I want to switch from polish to cortex back and forth. And polishing is really about contact. So it's about rubbing that tip. It's safe with a polymer tip. If you're using a metal tip, I do a lot less polishing and a lot more YAG lasers. I always uh, remind my residents and fellows that you know if you uh, know how to do a YAG laser, uh, probably do a YAG laser. The YAG laser is always better than rupturing capsule uh, at the end of a perfect case trying to do excessive polishing. It does, it's, it's an unnecessary step in most cases. It's kind of nice if everything's going well, but don't push it. You just saw there in the polishing where I engaged a little bit of capsule and as I'm polishing and really as I'm getting cortex, especially sub-incisional cortex, you're, you're not necessarily looking where you're grasping. You're looking in the center of the red reflex to watch for capsule wrinkles. That's when you need to let go. That's when you need to be very familiar with how to reflux with your foot pedal because it, the eye doesn't always let go on its own. Know what reflux is and that's a good time to use it. And it'll spit the capsule back out. So here we're taking sub-incisional. I'm trying to go in areas that do not have an open capsule next to them. But now I'm down to the last quarter, so I have no choice. And that's when I'm going to slow down a little bit. Take it slow. We've got a little polish here. Polishing is about contact again. Okay, I'm planning to take it in quarters. I'm engaging. Then I'm put, put, and I'm moving in an arc as I engage. Now I'm going to the other side, starting over where there's no clear open capsule behind me. Now I'm moving sub incisional, and I'm once I engage and move in an arc, I'm pushing down, pushing down, then pulling central, then pulling up and adding foot as I go. And this is a little bit of a problematic shell. It's almost like an epinuclear shell here, and sometimes it is required to do a bottom up peel. And I think that another general principle I would say is that if you're looking straight down the bore of your port on your IA, if it's not tilted at all to either side, it's very rare to see posterior capsule come into that. So be careful when you're pointing the port down or to the side, but when you're looking straight down it, when it's facing vertically up on the visual axis straight towards you, it's very hard to engage posterior capsule, and I think you can be more aggressive with the foot when you've got it facing up towards you. So you're usually going to engage with it pointing to the side or down, but make sure you're looking straight down it when you add a lot of foot to take that cortex. Hope this is helpful. This is a five of six, and uh, the final one's coming up next, so make sure and watch it. Thanks.